Hi, I am Akhilesh Kumar Shivasto. In the series of programming of the graph, up to now we have discussed about how to represent the graph in the memory using the adjacency list. Then we have seen how to find out the BFS and the DFS. Then we have extended the concept of the DFS to find the number of connected components in the graph and the elements in each of the connected components. We also have seen how to compute the minimal spanning tree of the given graph using the Prim's algorithm. In today's lecture, we will discuss about how to find the shortest path using the Dijkstra's algorithm. So Dijkstra's algorithm is a single source shortest path. Given a source, we have to find out the shortest path to every other vertex in the graph. So now let's look at the problem and understand the concept. Then we will implement this problem using the C++ estimate. So here is the problem. In this problem, vertex A is considered as a source and B, C, D, E, and F are considered as the destinations. So we have to find the shortest path of each of the vertex from the source vertex A. So this problem resembles with what we have done in the previous lecture of finding the minimal spanning tree using the PIMS algorithm. What we've done, we have uh, made use of the priority queue for storing the key values of the different vertex. Then we used to delete the minimum cost or minimum key value vertex from the graph. And then we were finding out the connections from that vertex. We were updating the key values of the vertex if the cost of the edge was less than the key value of the vertex. A similar concept will be used here also. To solve this problem, we are we are setting up the distance and the distance of the source vertex is set as zero and the distance of all of the vertexes has been set as infinite. Setting up the infinite distance means that no vertex is approachable or no vertex is reachable from the source vertex. Let's store the vertex A B, C, D, E, and F in the table. Let's make the distance of each of the vertex in this uh, table. Let's say the distance of A to A is zero. The distance of B from A is infinite, let's say. This for same for B, C, D, E, and F vertex. And then we are going to make an entry for the predecessor of each of the vertex. And we assume that no vertex is reachable initially from any other vertex. Hence, the predecessor of each of the vertex has been set as nil. We are inserting all these elements in the priority queue based on the distance. And let's assume that the the A is the source and we are going to delete the minimum distance vertex from the priority queue. In this case, it is A with a distance zero. We will now explore all the vertices which are reachable from A. So let's look at the graph and see which of the vertices are reachable from A. So the vertex which are reachable from A are B and C because there are the direct edges from A to B and A to C. The distance of B can be set as zero plus the cost of the edge that is seven. And we can update the distance seven for the vertex B because in seven is less than infinite. So we are updating the distance of B vertex as seven because seven is less than infinite. The similar will be the case for vertex number C. From A to C, we have an edge. The, the cost of the edge is 12. And 0 plus 12 is the distance of vertex C from A. 
12 is less than infinite, so we can set the distance of C vertex as 12. And the predecessors of both the vertex B and C can be updated as A because the B and the C vertices have been explored from vertex A. The distance of all the other vertices will be same as infinite. Let's do the next deletion from the priority queue of the minimum distance vertex. In this case, this is vertex number B. Now let's explore the edges going from vertex number B. So these edges are B to D with a distance 9 or with a cost 9 and B to C with a cost 2. Let's first look at the B to D edge which has a cost 9. So in case we are trying to move from the vertex number A to B, the cost is 7. So in case we want to reach from A to D, the cost will be distance of B plus the cost of this edge. So 7 plus 9 makes it 16. So 16 is the new distance for vertex number D. Let's look at the vertex number C. Its distance has already been set as 12. Now let's see if we can reach with, a, with the, the less distance than 12. So the cost or the distance for reaching up to vertex number B is 7. If I add the cost of the edge B to C to this, the distance from A to C becomes 9. Earlier the distance was 12, but now we are finding it 9. So we will update this with 9. So the new distance for vertex number C is 9. And since we are exploring these vertices C and D from vertex number B, hence the predecessors will be set as B for both these vertices. After this, we will once again delete vertex C, which is of minimum distance. So from C, there is only one connection. C to E, it has a cost 10. For reaching up to C, we require 9 distance. For reaching up to E, we require 9 plus 10, that is 19 distance. So 19 is the new distance of vertex E. And since E has been explored from vertex number C, its predecessor should be set as T. For rest of the vertices, the distance remains the same. Now we will update the distance of the other vertices by deleting a vertex with the minimum distance in the priority queue. So the minimum distance in the priority queue is of vertex number D. Now let's up make the updations from vertex number D. So there is only one edge which is going to F. For reaching up to D, we require 16. For reaching up to F, if we require 16 plus 1, that is 17. So the new distance which has been updated for F is 17. And since F has been reached from vertex number D, we will update the predecessor as D. Let's once again delete the minimum distance vertex, that is F. We cannot reach anywhere from F because there is no outgoing edge from F. Hence, no additions will be made in the priority queue. The next we can do is the deletion of the vertex E. Since all of the vertices have already been deleted from the priority queue, there is no chance of the updation. And our process is over. So what we have found that the distance from A to B is 7. Distance from A to D is 16. Distance from A to F is 17. Distance from A to C is 9. Distance from A to E is 19. And the path, if we need to find out the path, then let's redraw all these vertices and make use of the predecessors to find out which path has been selected for finding out the minimum distance. So the predecessor says that there is no predecessor of A. The predecessor of B is A. It means A to B, there should be an edge. 
the predecessor of c is b it means b to c there should be an edge predecessor of d is b it means b to d should be an edge predecessor of e is c it means c to e there should be an edge predecessor of f to uh, f is d so d to f this is the f vertex d to f should be an edge so if you mark the distances of uh, these edges what you find that if you want to reach from a to b the distance is 7 if you want to reach to d from a so the path is a to b then b to d 9 plus 7 is 16 the distance of vertex d similarly if you want to reach to f from a the path is a to b then b to d and then d to f hence the cost is 17 or the distance is 17. if you want to reach to c from a then the path is a to b and then b to c hence the cost is 7 plus 2 9 and if you want to reach to e the cost will be a to b b to c and c to e means 7 plus 2 plus 10 means 19. now let's write uh, let's try to write the algorithm for this, the algorithm is very, very simple. We are going to find out the single source shortest path using the Dijkstra's algorithm. Here a graph is given where I will be given the adjacency list, the number of vertices in the graph and the source vertex that is S. Now, Initially, what we, where we need to do, we need to set the distance and the predecessor of each of the vertex as distance infinite and the predecessor as nil. So for all u element of vertices of graph, but not the source, what we have to do, we have to set the distance of each of the vertex as infinite and the predecessor of each of the vertex as nil. Alongside, we need to insert all these vertices in the priority queue. So let's say we have a priority queue PQ and the vertex U with the distance D has been inserted in the priority queue. Having inserted all these vertices, we need to set the distance of the source vertex as 0 and the predecessor of the source vertex as nil. And we need to insert this vertex 2 in the priority queue. After this, we'll keep on removing the elements or the vertex from the priority queue until the priority queue becomes empty. So let's say there is a function empty which will check if the given priority queue is empty or not. So in case it is not empty, let's remove an element from the priority queue by calling the dq function. After this, we need to check all the connections from x. So for all y that is adjacent to x do it means we have to find out all the connections from x so if the distance of y is greater than the distance of x plus the edge connecting x to y let's say wxy is giving us the cost of the edge then we will update the distance of y as distance of x plus w x y alongside we need to set the predecessor of y vertex as x because y is getting explored from x we also need to check if y is adjacent to x it means there is an edge from y to x or x to y then y should be present in the y should be present in the priority queue 
So if y is adjacent to x, we need to check if y is the element of the priority queue, then only we should try making the updations. Otherwise, we should not try to make the addition. If the vertex has already, already been deleted from the priority queue, we shouldn't do anything for making the updation. For doing the programming of uh, this uh, concept or for the programming of the single source process path, as we did in the Prims algorithm, we need to maintain the adjacency list that not only stores the vertex as a connection, but the cost of the vertex also. For example, if I have the graph like this, one to two, and then two to three, and then three to four, and the cost of the edges are, let's say, five, 10, and 12, then the adjacency list that we are making should have four vertices, zero, one, two, three, zero connects two, and the cost of the edge is five, so we are making or storing it as a pair, one connects, or not, this, let's say zero is the end of the vertex, and five is the cost of the edge. Let's just store it again. So we have five vertices, zero, one, two, three, four, and zero connects one, which has the cost five, and then one connects two, which has the cost five, then two connects three, that has a cost 10, three connects four, that has a cost 12, and four does not connect any. So we are going to store the two values in the adjacency list, one is the connecting vertex, and then the next one, the cost of the edge. For this, we need to make the adjacency list that will store the pair of the values. Both the pair of the values are integers and adj followed by n in the square bracket that denotes the number of vertices in the graph. After this, we need to have the vectors known as D, that is distance, it will be of size N. Similarly, the vertex predecessor that will also be of size N. We may need another vector just to find out if my vertex is there in the queue or not. And that vector may be that if the vertex has been selected in the uh, single source shortest path earlier, that should not be considered later for the updation. So now let's look at the code. So here is the code for single source shortest path using the dice transmitter. In this, what we have done, we have first taken the number of uh, vertices as an input from the user. Then we have asked the user to input the number of edges. With the number of vertices, we have created the adjacency list, which is storing the pair of the values. Then for each of the edge, we will take three inputs from the user, the two endpoints as A, B, and the cost. Here we are assuming that our graph is the uh, undirected graph. If we have the directed graph, then only this entry will be made. It means the A will be connected to B with the cost. In case we have the undirected graph, then A will be connected to B and B will be connected to A. Having said this, we will print the connections or we will print the adjacency list just to check if the entries made are correct or not. Let's say we have the adjacency list I, then there will be, let's take an example to understand this. 
let's say we have three elements in the graph or three connections, one, two, and three, three vertices. And it has a cost five and it has a cost 12, let's say. Then the adjacency list, well, let's say we have one, two, four connection also. And let's say one, two, five connection. Let's say the cost of the edge is seven and six. So adjacency list will store five vertices. And if uh, we are assuming that the vertex number is starting from zero, then we can say that there is one more vertex with zero. Let's say the cost of the edge is six. So zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So if we make the entry from zero to six, for zero to one, it will be of cost six. And then from one, we have the entry of two, which has a cost five. And then from one, we have a connection to four. So it has a cost six. From one, we have the connection to five, which has a cost seven. If I look at the entry number one in this graph, it means this entry. So in this entry, we have first this pair, second this pair, and third this pair. This will be index zero, this will be index one, and this will be index two. So in the adjacency list, if I am referring to vertex number one and its connection, so vertex number one with connection zero has two elements. One is two and another one is five. So if we need to access two, then I'll write dot FIRST first. And then if I need to access the second one, I will write ADJ one zero dot second. So this will give us the weight of the connection. Similarly, if I have to access this entry, then I'll have to write ADJ one one dot first and ADJ one one dot second. Similarly, if I have to access this one, and I'll, I'll have to write adj12 dot first and adj12 dot second. So this is very simple. After this, after printing the uh, connections of the graph, we will be finding out the shortest path using Dijkstra's algorithm. For this, we need some vectors as this, as we already have discussed. So we need the in priority queue or not vector, then distance vector. The size of the distance vector is n, and each of the element have been initialized to integer max, and it means infinite. And then the predecessor have been set to minus one, it means nil for each of the vertex. So these three vectors have a size n, and we have specifically initialized all these things. So if a vertex is there in the priority queue, it's one. If it is not, it is zero. If we delete an element from the priority queue, the value or in priority queue for that vertex will be set as zero. Now we need to store the priority queue elements and the priority queue is by default the max priority queue or the descending priority queue. To make it min priority queue, we need a comparator. And the comparator here is greater. Now here we are assuming that source, we are asking the user to input the source vertex. We are going to store the pair of the values. Uh, zero is the distance and source is the vertex number of the source. The distance of source has been set as zero. So in the priority queue, we are going to store the pair of the value. 
first is the distance and the second one is the vertex number. So this is the pair distance comma vertex number. For all of the vertices, we, we, we will store that vertex or we will insert that in the priority queue. So as a pair, we will be storing the infinite value and the vertex number in the priority queue. So if it is source, we will not insert. Otherwise, we will insert. So for 0 to n minus 1, if that vertex is not source, we are going to insert the infinite and the vertex number in the priority queue. After this, you know that uh, there will be n minus 1 times deletion from the priority queue. So hence, the loop that runs up to n minus 1 time. Why we are deleting it n minus 1 times? Just because uh, if uh, the last vertex will be deleted from the priority queue, there will be no updation from that. So that is why we are deleting the vertex for n minus 1 time. Then we are taking the top element or the element or the vertex with the minimum distance in the pair x and we are deleting that vertex and whatever is the vertex we are removing that vertex from the priority queue by setting the in pqv as 0. If in pqv is 1 it means that vertex is there in the priority queue and if we are deleting it we will set this parameter as 0. Now we'll look at the connections from this vertex. For each of the connection, we are finding out the vertex number and the weight of the edge. If the vertex hence found from the connection is there in the priority queue, then we will try to make the updation. The updation will be made only if the distance of the vertex is greater than the weight plus the distance of that vertex. If the distance plus weight is less than the distance of the vertex, then only the updations can be made. Hence the updations, distance of vertex equals to weight plus distance V and the predecessor of vertex is made as vertex V. Since the distance has been updated, we need to uh, insert the updated distance and the vertex in the priority queue. So the pair of the value distance of vertex comma vertex number is inserted in the priority queue again. So this continues for n minus 1 times. After this we need to print the shortest distance. So we are going to print the vertex number, its distance and its parameter just to make sure that whether we did the computations correctly or whether we wrote the code correctly. Let's run this code and find out if the code is working fine. Let's make the entries for this graph. It is asking about the total number of vertices in the graph. So we have a total six vertex in the graph. You can see on the left, on the right hand side that we have six number of vertices in the graph. The number of edges here are eight. First vertex is connecting zero with one and it has a cost seven. Second vertex is connecting zero with five and it has a cost 12. Third vertex, third edge is connecting 1 with 5 and it has a cost 2. Fourth is connecting 1 with 2, it has a cost 9. Fifth is connecting 5, 4, it has a cost 10. Sixth is connecting 4 with 2, it has a cost 4. Seven is connecting 2 with 3 and it has a cost 1. 8 is connecting 4 with 3 and it has a cost 5. You can see that this is the adjacency list. And then the source vertex here is 0. 
you can see that the distances and the predecessors have been set here. So thank you for watching this video. We'll come in the next lecture with some new topic related to the graph and its programming. Thank you.